Achalasia is a rare disorder that results from progressive destruction of the ganglion cells in the myenteric plexus of the esophageal wall. The destruction of these cells leads to the inability of the lower esophageal sphincter to relax and leads to the loss of peristalsis of the distal esophagus. As a result, there is dilatation of the distal esophagus. Patients often present with dysphagia, regurgitation, heartburn, reflux, and weight loss. Achalasia can occur at any age, but most likely diagnosed in those ages 25 to 60 years old. Now, the esophagus is a muscular tube that transports swallowed solids and liquids from the pharynx to the stomach. The esophagus has a similar structure to the rest of the gastrointestinal tract, as it consists of outer layer of connective tissue, the adventitia, two muscular layers, an outer longitudinal layer, and an inner circular layer, a submucosa, a mucosa consisting of non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, which is continuous with the columnar epithelium of the stomach. The gastrointestinal tract is able to move food along and not backwards through its intrinsic peristaltic movements. The intrinsic peristaltic movements are controlled by the enteric nervous system, which is composed of an outer plexus, the myenteric plexus, also known as the Auerbach plexus, and then there's the inner submucosal plexus, also known as the Meissner's plexus. The myenteric, the Auerbach plexus, lies between the longitudinal and circular muscle layers of the gut and exerts main control over gastrointestinal movements. The inner mucosa plexus, the Meissner's plexus, is the main control of gastrointestinal secretion and local blood flow. There are two esophageal sphincters, an upper and lower. The lower esophageal sphincter is a muscle and its tone is controlled by the myenteric plexus. The myenteric plexus consists of excitatory nerve cells which contract the sphincter, preventing reflux of food and acids from the stomach. The myenteric plexus also contains inhibitory nerve cells which relaxes the sphincter when food travels down the esophagus to the stomach. Important to know that the enteric nervous system is also partly controlled by the central nervous system. The vagus nerve from the brainstem innervates the enteric nervous system, and so do sympathetic nerve fibers from the spinal cord. Some clinical pearls. Gastroesophageal reflux disease is a common misdiagnosis made in patients with achalasia. They are commenced on a proton pump inhibitor, and the time to diagnosis is prolonged, leading to poor patient outcomes. Now, the pathophysiology of achalasia is thought to be the result of loss of the inhibitory neurons in the myenteric plexus of the distal esophagus and the lower esophageal sphincter that leads to unmatched excitation. The excitatory cells in the myenteric plexus release the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, which causes smooth muscle contraction of the distal esophagus and the lower esophageal sphincter. Usually, the inhibitory cells release vasoactive intestinal peptides, VIP, and nitric oxide, which have the effect of smooth muscle relaxation. However, in the absence of vasoactive intestinal peptide and nitric oxide due to inhibitory cell destruction, acetylcholine from the excitatory neurons is unmatched. Now, the result of this imbalance is the failure of the lower esophageal sphincter uh, to relax due to uninhibited contraction and loss of distal esophageal peristalsis. Achalasia is also considered to be an autoimmune disorder. Patients with achalasia have been shown to have antibodies to myenteric cells in their circulation. So the exact etiology of achalasia is unknown. However, it is thought that achalasia can be due to idiopathic unknown cause 
or associated with viral, parasitic infections, autoimmune, or neurodegenerative disorders. Trypanosoma cruzi, the parasite that causes Chagas disease, has been shown to infect myenteric neurons. This in turn causes an immunologic reaction to myenteric nerve neurons, leading to loss of the esophageal and lower esophageal sphincter intramural ganglia. In Chagas disease, other parts of the gastrointestinal tract are also affected. On a separate note, patients with serum antibodies to the herpes simplex virus human papillomavirus, and the rubiola virus have been shown to have higher incidences of achalasia. Important point to remember is that both myenteric antibodies and herpes simplex virus 1 antibodies are found in majority of patients with achalasia. Patients with achalasia also have a 3 to 4 times higher risk to have another autoimmune disease. Patients with achalasia often present with dysphagia, occurring with both solids and liquids, along with non-acidic regurgitation of undigested food. Additional symptoms include heartburn, weight loss, and chest pain, unresponsive to acid-reducing agents. The initial investigation to order in patients with suspected neurologic cause of dysphagia is barium swallow, which shows dilation of the esophagus, with narrowing at the lower esophageal sphincter, known as a bird's beak appearance. The diagnosis is confirmed by esophageal high manometry testing. Classically, the visual findings of achalasia on endoscopy include a dilated esophagus and a puckered lower esophageal sphincter. Endoscopy also reveal retained foods and saliva with no signs of mechanical obstruction. A small fraction, about 2-4% of patients who are suspected to have achalasia, in fact have pseudoachalasia. Pseudoachalasia is due to an obstructed distal esophagus from causes other than destruction of the myenteric plexus at the distal esophagus. Rather, they are usually due to obstruction by a malignant mass, but also can be due to scleroderma or a stricture from ischemia, toxins, or reflux. Malignancies responsible for pseudoachalasia include gastric carcinoma, esophageal carcinoma, and lymphoma. The pathophysiology of pseudoachalasia is thought to be due to obstruction of the distal esophagus, secondary to growth of a tumor, and invasion of the tumor that causes denervation and a functional obstruction in a manner similar to achalasia. Suspected pseudoachalasia should be evaluated with CT or endoscopic ultrasound. Now for treatment. Approaches to treatment of achalasia include endoscopic or surgical intervention with the goal of lowering a lower esophageal pressure, which then will hopefully relieve symptoms. Now, endoscopic therapy involves injection of botulinum toxin, pneumatic dilation, or perioral endoscopic myotomy. Botulinum toxin injection into the lower esophageal sphincter inhibits acetylcholine release, causing lower esophageal sphincter relaxation. Botulinum toxin injection can be repeated, but becomes less effective. Pneumatic dilation disrupts the circular muscle, Clinical symptom improvement ranges from 50 to 90%, and the most common complication is perforation. Perioral endoscopic myotomy is a newer endoscopic procedure in which the physician creates an esophageal submucosal tunnel extending to the level of the lower esophageal sphincter and then performs a myotomy. Studies have shown resolution of symptoms in over 80% of patients. Surgical treatment consists of laparoscopic myotomy of the circular muscle fibers. Fund application is also recommended to avoid reflux symptoms after myotomy. Medical therapy is reserved for patients who are poor candidates for endoscopic or surgical therapy. 
Lower esophageal sphincter pressure can be reduced with medical therapy, including calcium channel blockers such as nifedipine or long-acting nitrates. Patients with achalasia for more than 10 years have an increased risk of squamous cell carcinoma. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video.